Eye on the Truth Part 2. Eye on the Truth Part 2. A brief summary from the origin of Christianity to its present-day reality. The relief of the original sin. And no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. And if a heavily laden soul calls, another, to carry some of, its load, nothing of it will be carried, even if he should be a close relative. You can only warn those who fear their Lord unseen and have established prayer. And whoever purifies himself only purifies himself for, the benefit of, his soul. And to God is the a final a destination, Quran 35 18. And no soul will carry the sin of another, but rather every sinning soul will carry its own sin. And if a soul who has been burdened with carrying its sin, calls someone to carry some of its sins, nothing of its sins will be carried, even if the one who is being asked is a close relative. O Messenger, you can only warn of Allah's punishment those who fear their Lord in private and complete the prayer in the most perfect way, for they are the ones who will take heed from your warning. Whoever is purified from his sins, the greatest of them being polytheism, then his purification will only benefit himself when he returns to his Lord. And Allah is not in any need for his slave's obedience. To Allah is the return on the day of judgment for the reckoning and recompense. Surah Fatr A18 Humans cannot be blamed for sins they did not commit, nor can they get salvation without deeds. According to Islam, every child is born sinless. It is only after they reach the age of puberty or maturity that they are held accountable for their sins. The first lesson for forgiveness was when God accepted Adam's repentance for eating the forbidden fruit. Every soul bears the burden of its own sin. This shows the justice of God. Human beings cannot be blamed for sins they did not commit, nor can they get salvation, if they are evildoers on earth. O mankind, fear your Lord and fear a day when no father will avail his son, nor will a son avail his father at all. Indeed, the promise of God is truth, so let not the worldly life delude you and be not deceived about God by the deceiver. Quran 31,33 O people! Be mindful of your Lord by fulfilling his commands and refraining from his prohibitions, and fear his punishment on the day when no father will be able to benefit his child. Nor a child benefit its father in the slightest. Indeed, the promise of Allah of Ragidal on the day of judgment is true and will inevitably be fulfilled, so let not the worldly life and whatever desires and amusements it contains deceive you. Nor let Satan deceive you by misunderstanding the forbearance of Allah and his delaying the punishment from you. Surah Lukman's 33 According to Christianity Parents are not to be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their parents, each will die for his own sin. Deuteronomy 24 verse 16 We understand here that God is just. No one is tortured for a sin he did not commit. You do not sacrifice one child to forgive another's sin. God is perfect, he has no need to die for us. He gives life and death, so he did not die nor was he resurrected. He saved his prophet Jesus and protected him as he helps and protects his believers. God is most merciful to his creatures, more than a mother is to her children, so he forgives them whenever they repent to him. It was God's plan before the creation of Adam that mankind would be placed on earth. Islam does not consider mankind's life on earth as a punishment, but as part of God's plan. God created humans to worship him as he is the master of the universe. Dash, and I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Quran 51 56 And I did not create jinns and men except for my worship alone. I did not create them to make a partner for me. I do not want any provision off them nor dole want them to feed me. Allah is the provider for his servants, all of them are in need of his provision, he is the supreme lord, every mighty, nothing is outside his ability. All of the jinns and men submit to his power, may he be glorified. Surah ADH Dariyat 56-58 Dash, and when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said, Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood? While we declare your praise and sanctify you? God said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Quran 2.30 Allah tell us his prophet and humankind that he said to the angels that he would put humans on earth who will give birth to other humans, to inhabit it according to his laws. The angels asked their Lord, trying to understand, what the wisdom behind making the children of Adam guardians of the earth was, when they would ruin things in it, and kill in it. While the angels always do as he tells them, and recognize his greatness, praising him and honoring his power and perfection. Allah replied to their guest Ion, saying that he knew the deep wisdom behind his creation of them, and behind making them guardians, and the angels did not. Surah Al-Baqarah 30 The First Forgiveness from God According to Christianity 
The original sin is the sin of the first man, Adam, who disobeyed God in eating the forbidden fruit, of knowledge of good and evil, and, in consequence, transmitted his sin and guilt by heredity to his descendants. The Quranic verses below tell us about the Islamic perspective of the sin of Adam. God taught Adam the names of all things. And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he showed them to the angels and said, Inform me of the names of these, if you are truthful. They said, Exalted are you, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, it is you who is the knowing, the wise. Quran 2 31-32 To reveal the position of Adam, Allah taught him the names of everything, living things and objects, their pronunciation and meanings. Then he put them before the angels, instructing them to tell him the names if they were telling the truth when they said that they were a nobler and better creation than Adam. Recognizing their shortcomings and that everything comes from Allah, they said that they acknowledged that his judgment and sacred law could not be doubted, and that they had no knowledge except for the knowledge he had given them, accepting that he is the knowing, from whom nothing is hidden, and the wise in his decrees and laws. Surah Al-Baqarah 31-32 God commanded the angels to bow down to Adam. God commands the angels to bow down to Adam. All obey, except for Iblis, Satan, who feels that he is made from fire, should not be bowing to Adam who was made from earth. His disobedience of God's command, followed by his pride, caused him to fall out of God's favor. Quran 2 33-34 Then Allah told Adam to tell them the names. When Adam told the angels the names of things, as he had been taught, Allah reminded the angels that he had told them that he knew everything hidden in the heavens and the earth. And what they made public and what they said inside of themselves. Allah reveals that he told the angels to prostrate to Adam out of recognition and respect, so they prostrated to him, eager to do as he told them, except for Iblis, or Satan, who was originally from the jinn. Due to the excellence of his worship, Allah had entered Iblis into the company of the angels, but he then returned to his lowly nature, refusing to prostrate as Allah told him to, and becoming proud towards Adam, leading to him becoming a disbeliever. Surah Al-Baqarah 33-34 God place Adam and Eve in the garden and tells them that they are free to enjoy of its fruits except one tree. We said, O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden, and eat of the bountiful things therein as, where and when you will, but approach not this tree, or you run into harm and transgression. Quran 2.35 Allah told Adam to live with his wife, Eve, in the garden, with nothing to ruin their bliss. They were instructed to consume the delightful food from anywhere in the garden, but also to avoid going near a particular tree which they were forbidden to eat from. If they ate from the prohibited tree, they would become wrongdoers for disobeying him. Surah Al-Baqarah 35 Satan deceived Adam and Eve into eating of the fruits of the tree. But Satan caused them to slip out of it and removed them from that condition in which they had been. And we said, Go down, all of you, as enemies to one another, and you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. Quran 2 36 Satan did not stop whispering to them, trying to trick them, until he made them slip and fall by eating from the tree which Allah had told them not to. For this Allah sent them out of the garden, telling them and Satan to go down to the earth, some of them enemies to others, where they would stay and live, enjoying the good things there until their lifespan, and until the final hour arrived. Surah Al-Baqarah 36 Addition to the names of all things God wanted to teach Adam how to repent whenever he sins. We in the Quran, the reference of God to himself as we or us in many verses of the Quran denotes grandeur and power in Arabic. In the English language this is known as the royal we, where a plural pronoun is used to refer to a single person holding a high office, such as a monarch. For the avoidance of doubt, the Quran has consistently reminded us of the singular pronoun in reference to God, when called upon by his servants. Adam receives the words of repentance from God. Then Adam received from his Lord, some, words, and he accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is the accepting of repentance, the merciful. Quran 237 Adam received the words given to him by Allah, and was inspired to ask for forgiveness with them. These words of forgiveness are mentioned in Surah Al-Araf, 23, they said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will certainly be of the losers. Allah accepted Adam's turning to him and forgave him, for he is always forgiving and merciful towards his creation. Surah Al-Baqarah 37 And this was the first forgiveness from God. It was a test to teach all humanity the way of repentance, whenever the human sins he has to repent like Adam, so the inheritance was not the sin itself but the way of repentance. The Quran here states as well that Eve is not blamed for Adam's sin. 
Each of them accepted their own mistake and repented to God, and asked God to forgive them and God did forgive them. So, the burden of seduction and original sin is lifted from women. God informed Adam that he will send his guidance to him and his descendants. We said, go down from it, all of you. And when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Quran 238 Allah told them to go down together from the garden to the earth, and said that when he sends guidance, through the prophets. Those who follow it and have faith in his prophets will have nothing to fear in the world to come, and will not feel sorrow about what passed them by on earth. Surah Al-Baqarah, 38 And God tells us that this life is not our final destination. God has not created human beings just to eat, drink, and reproduce. If that were the case, animals would be considered better than humans, as they also eat, drink, and reproduce, but they are not accountable for their actions. One's life is a test and each soul is responsible for its own deeds, God honored human beings and favored them above many of his creatures. And we have certainly honored the children of Adam, mankind, and carried them on land and sea and provided for them of the good things and preferred them over much of what we have created. With, definite, preference. Quran 17 hours 70 minutes. And I have honored the children of Adam through intellect, making the angels prostrate to their father, and I subjugated for them the animals and vehicles that carry them on land, and the ships that carry them by sea. And I provided them with good food, drink, spouses and other things, and I granted them much virtue over much of my creation. They must be grateful therefore for Allah's favors on them. Surah Al-Isra 70 From the time of Adam, God the Creator assigned the most righteous person as a prophet to his society to guide them. The Creator's message is to believe in him and worship him alone. After people slipped into moral decline and corrupted their prophet's message by worshipping other things or humans with him, he would send a prophet to remind them of this pure message. The messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord, and so have the believers. All of them have believed in God, the Creator, and His angels and His books and His messengers, saying, We make no distinction between any of His messengers. And they say, We hear and we obey. We seek your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the final destination. Quran 2 285 The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, believes in everything that was revealed to him by his Lord, as do the believers. All of them believe in Allah, all his angels, all his books that he revealed to the various prophets and all his messengers that he sent. They believe in such messengers without making any distinction between them. They say, we have heard your instructions and prohibitions, and we obey you by following your instructions and leaving your prohibitions. We ask you to forgive us, O Lord, for in all our matters we return to you alone. Surah Al-Baqarah 285 while many of the prophets and messengers that God has sent to different nations are mentioned by name in the Quran, i.e., Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, Ishmael, Isaac, Joseph, etc. Others are not mentioned. Therefore, the possibility that other famous religious teachers such as the Hindu lords Rama, Krishna, and Gautama Buddha were prophets of God cannot be rejected outright. We read in the Quran. And we have already sent messengers before you, Muhammad. Among them are those, whose stories, we have related to you, and among them are those, whose stories, we have not related to you. And it was not for any messenger to bring a sign, or verse, except by permission of God. So, when the command of God comes, it will be concluded in truth, and the falsifiers will thereupon lose, all. Quran 40 78 O Messenger! I have sent many messengers before you to their people, but they rejected them and caused them harm. The messengers were patient upon the rejection and harm they faced. From among these messengers are those whom I have related their stories to you, and those whose stories I have not related. It is not correct for a messenger to bring a sign to his people from his Lord, except if he and may he be glorified, wishes for him to bring it. So, for the disbelievers to demand signs is wrong. When the decree of Allah for victory or judgment in favor of the messengers against their nations happens, the judgment will be made fairly. The disbelievers will then be destroyed and the messengers will be saved. At that point when the judgment is made between the servants, the people of falsehood will lose out by having put themselves in a position of doom by committing disbelief. Surah Gaffer 78 The Story of Prophet Abraham Although Muslims don't believe that the current Old Testament and the New Testament are the unadulterated word of God, like the Quran, but we will discuss the story of Prophet Abraham in both of them, as Muslims believe that both have a valid source which is the Torah and the Gospel, God's revelations to the prophets Moses and Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, some parts of them are from God and others not. Both the Old Testament and the New Testaments underwent severe changes to hide the monotheistic nature of God. The truth of the prophecy of the coming prophet Muhammad and the importance of the city of Mecca and other concepts. The Promised Son Say, O believers, we have believed in God, the Creator, and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants, and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we are Muslims, in submission, to him. Quran 2 136 Tell the Jews and Christians who make these baseless claims that you have faith in Allah and the Aaron which he revealed to you, and in what he revealed to Abraham and his sons Ishmael and Isaac, and to Jacob, and in what he revealed to the prophets from the descendants of Jacob. Say that you have faith in the Torah which Allah gave to Moses, and the gospel which he gave to Jesus, and in all the scriptures that he gave to every one of the prophets. With no distinction between them, having faith in all of them, not only having faith in some and rejecting others. Tell them that you humbly surrender to him alone. Surah al-Baqarah 136 Even though Muslims don't deny Prophet Isaac's prophecy, the promised son for them was Prophet Ishmael, the father of Arabs, from whom Prophet Muhammad descended as the last prophet. Here are some evidences from the Bible of this faith. God made a covenant with Prophet Abraham before both of his sons were born. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. Genesis 15 verse 18 All the descendants of Prophet Ishmael settled in Arabia, this area is located between the Nile and the Euphrates. His descendants, Ishmael, settled in the area from Havila to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt, as you go toward Ashur. Genesis 25 verse 18 Havila according to the Bible is in southwest Arabia, while Shur is located on the northeastern border of Egypt, and Ashur was the capital of the old Assyrian Empire, Iraq today. Therefore, the descendants of Ishmael settled this area extending south of the Hijaz Arabia, and north, which includes the land of Paran, Mecca according to the Bible, inhabited by Ishmael. Hagar is a legal wife to Prophet Abraham. So, after Abraham had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarah his wife took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. Genesis 16 verse 3 Ishmael is a legal son to prophet Abraham. Ishmael means, God hears. That God accepted the supplication of Abraham to give him a son. The name Ishmael was chosen by God. It was never mentioned in the Old Testament that Ishmael was an illegitimate son. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. Genesis 16 verse 11 God promised to make from Ishmael a great nation and honors him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you, I will surely bless him, I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. Genesis 17 verse 20 Ishmael is the promised son. Some time later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Genesis 22 verses 1-2 A contradiction is found here, it is mentioned that, Take your only son Isaac. Ishmael was the only a son of prophet Abraham for fourteen years, until the birth of prophet Isaac. When Isaac was born, Ishmael was no longer an only son. It is believed that the name of Ishmael was changed to Isaac in this verse and the word, only remains, by the mercy of God, to point to the distortion. According to the biblical verse below Hagar and Ishmael were sent away because of Sarah's jealousy. In Islam this move happened because of God's plan and it took place before the birth of Prophet Isaac. By reading the following biblical verses we can see that the Islamic version of the story is more accurate. Dash, the child grew and was weaned, and on the day, Isaac was weaned Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking, and she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. Genesis 21 verse 8 Dash, early the next morning Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He put the child upon her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. 
When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Genesis 21 verses 14 to 15. Abraham was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Genesis 16 verse 16. And he was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Genesis 21 verse 5. So, Ishmael was 14 years old when Isaac was born. This is because as mentioned, the incident happened after Isaac was weaned, and in the tradition of the time, a child is weaned around the age of three. Therefore, when Hagar and Ishmael moved, Ishmael was a full-grown teenager of about 17 years old. A teenager can't be lifted up and put under the bushes. According to the biblical verse Ishmael seems to be a baby not a teenager. This seems to be as another contradiction in the Old Testament. Ishmael was circumcised before the birth of Isaac. And Abraham was 90 years old and 9 when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised, and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Genesis 17 verses 24-27 Abraham, Ishmael, and the men of Abraham's family were circumcised, but Isaac was not born at that time. Isaac was born a year later, and he was circumcised at the age of eight. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old, when his son Isaac was born unto him. Genesis 21 verses 4-5 So, when the covenant was made, circumcision and sacrifice, Abraham was ninety-nine and Ishmael was thirteen. Isaac was born a year later, when Abraham was 100 years old. Abraham is a pure monotheist. Prophet Abraham is the ancestor of Judah, whom the Jews came from. So, Abraham cannot be a Jew simply because he came before Judah. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was one inclining. Toward truth, a Muslim, monotheist. And he was not of the polytheists. Quran 3 hours 67 minutes. Abraham was not a Jew or Christian in belief, but he was opposed to all false religions and obedient to Allah alone. He was also not one of those who ascribed partners to Allah, contrary to the idolaters of the Arabs, who claimed to follow his belief. The people who are most entitled to claim a link to Abraham are those who followed him in his time. As well as this Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who have faith in him from this nation. Allah helps and protects the believers. Surah Ali Imran 67-68 as it was mentioned in the introduction, Judah taught his people the religion of Prophet Abraham, which is pure monotheism, belief in one God and unifying him in worship. This is the exact definition of Islam. The religion which started from Prophet Adam and continued with the coming of Prophet Muhammad, thereby shifting the religious leadership to the Arabs and the direction of the prayer to Mecca. The Promised Land When Jesus Christ was asked about the place for worship, he stated that worship will be conducted at a new place other than Jerusalem. This is an indication of changing the direction of the prayer from Jerusalem to Mecca and shifting of the religious leadership from Israelites to Arabs. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. John 4 verses 19-24 Jesus spoke here about true believers who will worship God in a place other than Jerusalem. In the New Testament, Jesus refers to a stone rejected by builders, and then the stone became the cornerstone. It is also mentioned that the kingdom of God will be taken away and given to a people that will produce its fruits. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Jesus Christ said. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, Israelites, and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Matthew 21 verses 42-43 According to the Islamic version of the story, Prophet Abraham took Ishmael and Hagar and settled in Mecca, Paran in the Bible, a city where the Valley of Baca exists.
Our Lord, I have settled some of my descendants in an uncultivated valley near your sacred house, the Valley of Baca in Mecca, our Lord, that they may establish prayer. So, make hearts among the people inclined toward them and provide for them from the fruits that they might be grateful. Quran 1437 Our Lord, I have placed some of my decedents, Ismael and his children, to dwell in a valley, i.e., Mecca, in which there is no crop and no water inside your sacred house. Our Lord, you caused them to dwell by your house so they may uptake praying in it, so cause people's hearts to have compassion towards them and this city. And grant them sustenance from the crops in the hope that they will be thankful for the favors you have bestowed upon them. Surah Ibrahim 37 The Valley of Baca was mentioned in the Bible. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they will still be praising you. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring, the rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength, each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah O God, behold our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, than dwell in the tents of wickedness for the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalms 84 verses 1 to 11. Some claim that the verses above refer to the alleged Zion and present an argument for its existence. However, the descriptions are more applicable to Mecca as follows. And proclaim to the people the pilgrimage, they will come to you on foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every distant pass, that they may witness benefits for themselves and mention the name of God on known days over what he has provided for them of sacrificial animals. So, eat of them and feed the miserable and poor. Quran 22:27-28 Proclaim amongst the people, calling them towards pilgrimage of this house I ordered you to build. They will come to you walking and riding on every camel which is frail due to the difficulty it endured from traveling. The camels will bring them, carrying them from every distant path. So that they come to what will bring them benefit such as forgiveness of sins, attaining reward, unity of word, and so forth. And so that they remember Allah on the animals they slaughter in the known days, which are. the tenth of Dhul Hijjah and three days after it, in gratitude to Allah for the camels, cows and sheep he granted them. So eat of these animals and feed from them those who are extremely poor. Surah Al-Hajj 27-28 Mecca's gates are open day and night, and when we made the house, Kaibiya at Mecca, a visitation and a sanctuary for the people, saying, Make the place where Abraham stood a place of prayer. And we made a covenant with Abraham and Ishmael, purify my house for those who circumambulate around it, and those who cleave to it, to those who bow and prostrate, Quran 2 125. The Quran relates that Allah made the Kaaba a place for people to return to, as a means of connecting their hearts to him. When they travel from it, they return to it. It has also been made a safe place for them where they will not be attacked. Allah tells people to make the stone which Abraham stood on while he was building the Kaaba into a place of prayer. Allah instructed Abraham and his son Ishmael to purify the sanctuary from filth and idols for those who wish to worship in it, go around the Kaaba, stay there for worship, praying and so on. Surah Al-Baqarah 125 In Mecca, violence, devastation, destruction and hunting is forbidden, indeed those who have disbelieved and prevent from the way of God and from this sacred mosque, which we have appointed for all mankind, its resident and the foreigner have the same rights in it. And whoever wrongfully intends injustice in it, we shall make him taste a painful punishment. Quran 22:25. Those who disbelieved in Allah, turn others away from entering Islam and stop people from the sacred mosque, like what the idolaters did in the year of Hudaybiyah. That mosque which I made a direction for people in their prayers and one of the rites of Hajj and Umrah. And in which the person from Mecca who lives there and one who comes there besides the people of Mecca are the same, whoever intends to purposefully commit a shameful sin therein. I will make him taste a painful punishment. Surah Al-Hajj, 25. And which the person from Mecca who lives there and one who comes there besides the people of Mecca are the same, whoever intends to purposefully commit a shameful sin therein. I will make him taste a painful punishment. Surah Al-Hajj, 25